practice prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and today we're talking about the day one episode of Praxis Prepper Alien Invasion. We're going to talk a little bit about the lessons and topics that are raised in that episode, and then at the end, I'm going to share with you a sneak peek of what happens next week. But before any of that happens, if you haven't seen the episode, here's a link up in the corner. Check it out, and you'll have some sense of what we're talking about. But wait a moment. And now we're back. Before we get into the uh, topic discussion, though, I want to thank a few people who have made contributions through Patreon to the channel in the past week or so. If you're not familiar, the only reason that this uh, series is even possible is by the financial contributions of people through Patreon that are allowing me to take the extra time that it takes to make a series like this, which takes an enormous amount of time per episode. So they're the people that are making it all happen, and there are five new people that have contributed uh, you know, in the past couple weeks or so, and I wanted to thank them right here. First, Kipper, thank you very much. Judy Parsons Karens, thank you. Matthew Young, awesome, thank you very much. Manuel Cara, or Cara, I'm not sure about your last name, but thank you. Also, Bob Hill and Douglas Mueller. Thank you guys. Uh, the only reason, like I said, that this series is happening is because of the support of you and other people like you. If you are enjoying the series and you want to see it continue forward and you have the means of even just a dollar a month or something like that, here's a link right down below to the Patreon uh, account. You can join other people on there. Uh, I also pre-release uh, behind the scenes footage and people on the Patreon side of Practice Prepper also get to help steer the plot of the, uh, of the show and everything. So there's all that sort of stuff going on there. So Let's not talk about that anymore. Let's get to the topic of the day one episode. Now, in day one, uh, the ships have come in and it's clear something's about to happen. You know, we don't know exactly what, but something's about to go down. And that corresponds with um, sort of disasters. Uh, we don't want to call the alien thing a disaster yet because nothing's happened. But, you know, it's probably going to go there. We all know that. Uh, but disasters in real life oftentimes have that kind of warning as well. There's oftentimes 48 hours or 24 hours or so uh, where you know something's going to happen. Now, not all disasters are like that. Earthquakes, for example, you know, just comes out of nowhere. I know people are trying to figure out how to predict earthquakes, but you don't get a lot of lead time, uh, you know, to know that, you know, within 24 hours, you know, this is going to happen. But there are a lot of things that are like that. Hurricanes, for example, wildfires, even, uh, you know, financial crises. You know, for example, if the federal government declares a banking holiday over the weekend, you know, there's a pretty good chance on Monday that, you know, you might have some issues getting at your cash in the bank. So there are all sorts of real life sort of, uh, you know, SHTF events or just disaster events where you get some lead time on it. Now, if you're a prepper, your list of things you need to do in that 48 hour, 24 hour window is hopefully pretty small. That's the whole idea of prepping is making it so that you don't have to worry about it. For non-preppers, you know, we all kind of know the news footage of people running around like chickens with their heads cut off. You know, they go run into the grocery store to get bread and milk and water or batteries, buy a flashlight because they don't own one or something like that. Uh, but for preppers, the idea is you want to get that, that list really short. In the episode, I talk specifically about, you know, going in and stocking up on some medications that don't have very long shelf lives. Uh, there's Plenty of other things that people might want to do, uh, you know, at the, sort of the last minute. F fill up your fuel tanks, th uh, things like that. Do you have a list of things, of sort of last minute stuff that you can't really do that much in advance that, um, that you would do if you had a 24 or 48 hour sort of advance warning window? What is your list of things to do? If you think that it's important, share it with other people because the more that we can all help each other become more prepared, the better off it is for everyone. Uh, you're always better off if your neighbors are less desperate than more desperate <laughs> in an emergency. So sharing these ideas is really good for everyone and uh, a safe, secure, robust society starts at home with uh, you know our own preparedness but sharing those ideas with others is all, are also great too so what are your ideas share them below what do you think are the important things that uh, are critical to do if you know that something's something's incoming so without more any more blabbing about that let's jump to a little clip from uh, what's happening next week spoiler alert no it's not a spoiler in the in the clip but I'm gonna give you a little spoiler things are about to start happening amazing things <laughs> Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. So, I guess what I my my next plan is that I need to charge up all these batteries and Okay, yeah, that's somebody knocking at the door. That's why we have this. Uh, I mean, it's probably just someone from the neighborhood, but let's check it out. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4:30 New York time for a new video.